everybody my name is Lynn Hayes welcome back to my channel and if you're new here I appreciate your joining me here today there's a lot to talk about there's a lot going on this week so let's just dive right into it the first thing I want to talk about is the peak of the stellium in Aquarius so as some of you know we have had a lot of planets in the sign of Aquarius after the moon enters Aquarius on Tuesday, we'll have six planets in Aquarius. So we're really at the peak of the Aquarius stellium this week. With all of that Aquarius energy happening right now, there's a great push for autonomy and independence, the breaking free of any routines or strategies or any kind of rut that you might have been in. And this is really a theme of 2020. And I'll be talking about the square from Saturn to Uranus in just a little bit. Uranus, of course, is the modern ruler of Aquarius. Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. So when these two form a square, it's a very interesting phenomenon that I'm going to dive into in just a minute. But for now, I want to just talk about this concentration of energies in Aquarius. Aquarius is really all about the collective. It doesn't really have any sympathy for the individual. There's no real attention paid to what I want or what you want. It's really all about what's good for the collective. This also has a lot to do with friendships. And of course, under COVID, our friendships are really changing. Since we aren't really able to spend time with a lot of the people that we know, our groups of friends, which is one thing that Aquarius deals with, all of that is changing and it won't go back to where we were before. So how are we going to make these changes? That's really the theme of 2021. This intense Aquarian energy is going to peak at the new moon on February 11th. At the new moon, we have the sun, the solar conscious energy aligning with the moon, which are the lunar instincts. All of our emotional patterns that are represented by the moon, those are all being disrupted now. So this new moon has a lot of potential to create change, to break us out of ruts and patterns. That's not really anything new. We've really been dealing with this since December when Jupiter and Saturn aligned in Aquarius. This Aquarius new moon bursts open any closed set of patterns that are holding us back. So there's a lot of opportunity here. We also have a conjunction of Venus to Jupiter at the new moon, which helps us to open up some of these closed patterns that are keeping us held back, that are restricting our relationships and our friendships and all of our associations. And it's really an opportunity to create new pathways, new patterns and new templates really for how to bring our associations into this new world. Adding to these layers of the Aquarius energies this week is the upcoming square between Saturn and Uranus. Saturn is the furthest of the personal planets, the visible planets in the sky, and then Uranus is the first of the outer planets, the transformational planets. This overthrow of the old way and the creation of something completely new is what is happening here. And we have this on so many different levels. We're in the doorway to the Aquarian age. We are in this Aquarian time. And there's just a lot of letting go right now and a lot of new creation. And I feel like this is how we're going to get through the time of COVID. If we see this as a time of transformation, as a time of creating all kinds of new ways of living, all kinds of new ways of communicating, of learning, you know, with COVID, there have been so many different innovations in terms of gathering and community. You know, I'm a musician and we have all these new online virtual communities. So I'm playing music with people that I've never met. I miss my friends in real life, but still the doorway to this new world is wide open. And that's, I really do believe how we're going to get through this time and not just get through it, but really thrive under this new awakening. With the square between Saturn and Uranus, the exact square occurs on February 17th. The period for this video is February 8th to the 15th. So this alignment is going to be building through the whole week. When we're talking about Saturn and Uranus, those energies can take two, three, even four weeks to start building. And it's going to be hard to really tell because there's so much of this kind of change and resistance happening anyway. 
But this square is very interesting because it's an aspect that happens about every 15 years. But if you go back through time, what's interesting about it is that these square aspects tend to come in pairs. So this cycle began around 1999 and 2000. We had Saturn in Taurus, Uranus in Aquarius. Now we have Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. And if you go back through time, that pattern is fairly consistent most of the time. There are some anomalies, but there definitely is this sense of this pairing right now, ever since 1999, between Taurus and Aquarius. Now these signs, of course, are in a square aspect because Saturn and Uranus are in a square aspect. We have Taurus that really craves comfort and peacefulness and security and a lack of change. And then we have Aquarius, which is completely different, which embraces change, which doesn't like the same, which wants new and wants excitement and wants to keep changing so that we can grow and evolve. That's not to say that Aquarius is better than Taurus. It's easier for change. You know, any of you out there that have a lot of Taurus in your charts, you probably know exactly what I mean. You're probably resistant to change, maybe a little fearful of change, whereas the Aquarians are like, yeah, bring it on. But in any case, the lesson of the square, which is a challenging aspect, is really to learn how to bring those two influences together. We still have to maintain some kind of security. We still need to live on the planet Earth and honor the elements of the Earth, which is what Taurus is all about, the physical comforts and the security of knowing what to expect in our life. We can't just throw everything away. But we have Saturn right now, the planet of form in Aquarius, which it rules, which has to do with kind of sucking up the need for change and building something that's lasting, which is what Saturn really wants. Then we have Uranus, which is very happy to break everything into small little pieces and start from scratch, but it's in the sign of Taurus, which is the sign of security. So Uranus is the disruptor. It's disrupting our financial systems, which are also ruled by Taurus, having to do with possessions and economies. This is the theme of the year. It's really the theme between the solid things that you can really count on and the new ways of creating our lives for the new reality which is going to keep changing. There's also a strong focus on technology and also on science with Uranus and Aquarius. So we are going to have, you know, new vaccines. There's going to be new facets of healthcare that are going to be completely different. There's likely to be health passports that you carry on your phone. There's already a disruption with money, with Bitcoin, with cashless economic systems that just live on your phone, which is gonna be very difficult for some people, but that is how we're moving into this new age. In our personal lives, the square from Saturn to Uranus will affect all of us differently depending on our relationship with the idea of change. If change is comfortable for you, if it's exciting, if you're ready to let go of the past, this is not going to be that difficult. But if you're very fearful and you really long for the way your life used to be, you really can't wait to get back into a restaurant or to travel or to be with your friends, that's going to be more difficult because my personal feeling is that we are relying too much on this idea that a vaccine is going to take everything back to normal. Personally, I don't feel like that's going to happen because it seems to me that the whole idea of all the planetary energies, what they're informing us, is that change is inevitable. We have to change. We can't go back to the old normal. So finding a way to live in this new life, to find joy, to find pleasure, to find security and real happiness, and also connection with other people, that is the biggest thing. You know, it's a funny thing about Aquarius because Aquarius is all about the collective and community, but it's not really very personal. It's not a sign that really craves any kind of intimate contact with other people. But many of us need that kind of intimate contact and we have to find a way 
to maintain that even in the midst of all this Aquarian detachment. The other thing that I wanted to talk about this week is the harmonious sextile between Saturn and Aquarius and Chiron, which is in Aries. Chiron, of course, is the planet of healing and wounding. I suppose I should say of wounding and healing because that's ideally the trajectory that we want to take. So under the influence of Chiron, we are able to heal the old wounds that have risen to the surface into the conscious mind so that they can be dealt with. Saturn, of course, is the teacher. And when Saturn is harmonizing with Chiron in a sextile, which is a 60 degree angle aspect, very supportive, we learn how to create form and structure for this healing to take place. This is such a mild aspect, you probably won't even notice it, but in the midst of all of this Aquarian energy, which can be very electrical, it can sometimes create some anxiety if you're hypersensitive to energy. And this sextile between Saturn and Chiron can really help to smooth all of that out to mellow that out. It's possible that in the midst of all this electromagnetic swirling around that you might find some disturbances, some emotional energetic disturbances. If you do, this is a very good time to just relax and breathe into these disturbances and allow them to dissipate. With Saturn harmonizing with Chiron, this process of healing and release is that much easier. And the last thing is that Mercury is still retrograde, so we need to still be careful. We need to still watch how we're talking to other people. Make sure that if you sign an agreement that everything is clear, it's very easy to assume, oh, they know what I meant. But under Mercury retrograde, really all bets are off. And Mercury is in Aquarius, where we're filled with new ideas and where we can be somewhat impatient about slowing down and seeing if all of the details are correct. But it's even more important in those times. It's all too easy just to rush through something. I just wanted to give you a little reminder about that. And now let's talk about the week ahead. On Monday, the moon is in Capricorn, where it's easier for us to pay attention to the details of life, to be able to organize our thoughts and create some structure that helps to support us. However, the sun conjoins Mercury that morning, Eastern time. Many astrologers, especially traditional astrologers, say that when the sun is conjunct Mercury, that it's combust. If it's within, I think, 15 minutes of a degree, so very close as it is Monday morning, they call this Kazemi. And they say that this is dangerous. And I think this comes from other techniques like Harari, where you're doing a reading for a particular question and you don't want negative influences in the chart for this decision or for an election, say. If you're trying to elect a good time to begin a business, you know, maybe this is problematic. But in our personal life, really, I have not seen any difficulties. We do already have Mercury retrograde, and now the sun is conjunct Mercury, which just illuminates the mind. It illuminates our communication. It makes it more important. And of course, this is part of the retrograde cycle, the conjunctions of the sun to Mercury. It's just kind of critical when the sun is conjunct Mercury to be even more careful about communications and how we are talking to each other and the kind of commitments that we're making. That evening at around 9.20 p.m. Eastern time, the Capricorn moon harmonizes in a trine to Mars, which is in Taurus. So this is just a lovely time where we're likely to have really good energy. There's a lot of positive energy, but more than that, the kind of focus and concentration that helps us to be disciplined and to really achieve a goal. Tuesday, February 9th is the exact sextile from Saturn to Chiron. So this is a very good day for any kind of healing work. It's also a very good day for any kind of spiritual work or meditation or doing some kind of yoga because anything that we do that day will help to facilitate healing if that's something that would be useful for you. This will start building in the late morning Eastern time. The Capricorn moon will align with Pluto. Then it's going to go into Aquarius 
at 8.20 p.m. and it will start to transit all the Aquarius planets. But while it's conjunct Pluto, and this will only last for a few hours, the moon moves very quickly through all of these alignments. But when the moon conjoins Pluto, sometimes we feel more intense. There can be more conflict, sometimes more power conflicts, or we can feel just irritable and somewhat repressed sometimes with Pluto. But it's only going to last for a few hours and then at 8.20 p.m. the moon's going to move into Aquarius. Also on Tuesday, we have a building square between Mercury in Aquarius and Mars in Taurus. And this aspect culminates on Wednesday, February 10th. When Mercury is square Mars, that's going to add another layer to the moon Pluto, the idea of repression, frustration. And then when Mercury squares Mars, there can be some conflict in communication some yelling. And so the moon is going to be felt quite actively that day. The energies of the new moon are starting to build. Under the Aquarius moon, there's an embrace of anything that's innovative, anything that will bring in this new light, this new wisdom. We can have sometimes a download of instinctive information. So this could be a very exciting time. It could be a time though when we have some trouble sleeping. It could be a time where we're very restless, especially because Mercury, of course, is in Aquarius and it's retrograde. Mercury has just squared Mars. Then we have the moon in Aquarius setting off all the Aquarian planets. So just watch for this. This could be a day where you really need to take some time for meditation, for doing things that will calm your nerves, that will help you to ground. In the evening that day, between 5 and 7 p.m. or so Eastern time, the moon is going to transit Venus and then Jupiter. And that translates the conjunction of Venus to Jupiter, which actually takes place the following day on Thursday, February 11th, which I think is really neat because Thursday is Venus's day. But anyway, that's just a coincidence. But on Thursday, we do have that conjunction from Venus to Jupiter. Venus and Jupiter are the two benefics. They're the most beneficial of all the planets. Venus is about love and beauty and our ability to attract good things. Jupiter is expansive and optimistic and is associated with good fortune and good luck. And also, you know, it has some negative qualities as well, but when Venus and Jupiter come together, it's generally very positive. And that is, of course, the day of the new moon in Aquarius. So these aspects are locked into the chart of the new moon, which makes this a very positive event, especially because we also have Pallas Athena in Aquarius connecting with all of the Aquarian planets. So we have four planets, the sun, the moon, so six planetary bodies, as well as Pallas, the asteroid. That's just a lot of Aquarian energy. And Aquarius is really about the transmission of wisdom from the gods really is the way I like to think about it. And if you think about the image of Aquarius, the water bearer, you know, the water of knowledge is poured down from the heavens and then into this amphora that's being held by the humans so that that human can share it with the world. And I love that image for Aquarius and that's really what we have happening this week. It has the potential to be a week of awakening and the sharing and dispersal of wisdom. Then Friday, February 12th is really quite quiet. The moon will enter Pisces at about 2.23 a.m. Eastern time. When the moon is in Pisces, we tend to be drawn more into the realm of feelings and intuition, more into our imagination. We're often blessed with heightened creativity. We also have a conjunction from Mercury to Venus which is starting to build. Mercury retrograde, of course, transiting over Venus can be very good for relationships and any kind of communication. That aspect is building, but it's not exact until February 13th, the following day. Also on February 12th, there is a harmonious sextile from Mars and Taurus to Neptune, which starts to build on the 12th or maybe even the 11th but isn't exact until the 13th. There's these energies that are building that won't actually culminate until the 13th, but we can start to utilize them on the 12th. These are energies for creativity and for positive energies. When we have Mars and a sextile to Neptune, we can become like a spiritual warrior. 
We can have more energy for things like yoga. Our passions and our drive for creativity can lead us in a positive direction without the usual resistance that many of us have. And on Saturday, February 13th, we still have the moon in Pisces. There still is a lot of creative energy, a lot of intuitive flow. We can be more in touch with messages from our higher self, messages that come from the soul. And this creative spiritual flow does spill over into Sunday, February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. And I know many of us right now are struggling with our relationships or we're struggling being single. Is it harder right now to be married or to be single? It's hard to tell. But Valentine's Day is always kind of charged. And on this Valentine's Day, there's no planets in water signs, which is the element of emotion, except for the moon in the morning and then Neptune. But the moon's going to move into Aries around 10, 54 a.m. Eastern time. And Aries is not really oriented towards love, companionship, relating. Aries is all about me and what I want. And that's not a value judgment. That's not a criticism. That is the need of Aries. The need of Aries is to find out who am I? What do I want? What do I need? That's all of what Aries is all about. And that's the theme of this year's Valentine's Day. So don't be disappointed if you don't have a hallmark experience. I don't think any of us are going to. There's a lot of planetary stuff going on. We have all this Aquarian energy, which also is not about love. It's not about romance. It's about change. It's about idealism. And it's about creating a better world for everybody. Speaking of that, we do have the conjunction from Mercury to Jupiter that afternoon Eastern time. And it will be building all day. So Mercury conjunct Jupiter, the planet of abundance and positive thinking. This is a very good time to think positively. It can help us to open up our minds to other alternatives that maybe we hadn't considered, which is very helpful when you're in a time of change. And usually I like to talk about what's happening on the Monday that we have the new video because I know a lot of you don't watch necessarily on Monday. But there's really nothing happening on Monday. So when we have the next video, you know, we'll be talking about the Aries moon. And there are some things around that. The Aries moon at some point will transit over Chiron. But for now, I think this is a good place to leave our video for the week. And thanks so much for joining me. It's always wonderful to see you here. I hope you have a great week.